So I'm very excited to introduce my friend, um, Dr. Mary Spencer. Um, Mary holds a diploma in nursing from Waukee County General Hospital School of Nursing. She has an MSN in nursing from Carroll College and Columbia College, an MSN in administration conflict resolution from Marquette University, and a doctorate in education from Walden University. She is currently the director of career services here at MSOE, where she is also an adjunct assistant professor, and where she has held a leadership role since 1996. She has held numerous other leadership positions throughout her career, and aided, which have aided in her professional growth. Um, I am just so, so thankful that you are here today, and Mary Spencer, everyone. Okay, first of all, am I on? Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, thank you for having me, and I'm going to try and stick to the timeline that I have. I have some notes. Do you need a clicker? I'm going to need a clicker. I don't know if I can talk and click at the same time, but we'll see. Um, so which one of these things do I click? I don't do this. Just the top one? Okay, so first of all, the arrow. The arrow, all right. First of all, I want to share with you that I am deeply grounded in my faith. So you may see some of that come through here. Uh, understand there is not that serving leadership is not necessarily related to a religion, but I am deeply grounded in my faith, and it really helped me, helped me to get even more grounded in my faith. So you will hear that come out from time to time. I'm going to tell you a little bit about first how I started. I assumed uh, being a nurse, being a parent, a mom, and being a former military officer that I had the service and the leadership act all together. I am a big fan of Stephen Covey, Norman Vincent Peale, and uh, folks like um, the, uh, Wayne Dyer. Um, my colleagues and friends will often hear me say, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. I'm a firm believer in that. And that has helped me to actually gain, gain greater insight and be a lot more empathetic towards individuals. I, I look with a different lens now. But it wasn't until I came to MSOE, and I believe that was sometime in 1996. It's kind of hard to say because I was actually part of a transition from the old nursing program from Milwaukee County over to MSOE. But it wasn't until I came to MSOE that I started to really, really uh, evaluate and look at my leadership style. <coughs> and as well, my service style. I was introduced to some fantastic people. Uh, Bob, the late Bob Winter, some of you may know him, he introduced the BEC program here. Uh, Gene Wright, who's right here in this audience, uh, he uh, certainly, uh, he's an entrepreneur, he's a principal individual uh, and a great friend. You might know Mike Irwin, who is another uh, great friend, entrepreneur. If I had named all the things that Mike Irwin was involved in, I have to roll the scroll out here in the middle of the aisle. But uh, these people all are principal individuals, and they had something in common. The one thing they had in common was that they were introduced to me by a person named Ken McAteer. Ken McAteer was the former VP, and at that time called um, placement, career services it is now, but uh, the director of placement. And I was placed on, under his leadership and mentorship. Which, uh, which was a fa fantastic thing because I got the opportunity to observe someone that I think embodies uh, servant leadership. This is a man not of large stature now, but that commanded respect. He was sometimes feared, but always, always, always loved, and still is. He still is my good friend. We would sometimes have learning conversations. Now, this was before servant leadership was introduced to MSOE. We had learning conversations. And sometimes those learning conversations involved um, talking about leadership styles. I would bring to him things that I'd learned in school about a book I read, or he would bring to me things that he had read, things in the newspaper. Sometimes to get into politics. Uh, sometimes to get into you know some of the things that were going on at the school, but it all ways related to how we could develop and be better people. I watched this man 
uh, direct, get the job done. He was very he's very principal. He was uh, firm, but people respected him so much. <coughs> I hear people say. I would, oh, see what I did there? I should hold this in my hand. I need to go back. So I'll tell you when you click for me. Thank you so much. <laughs> back. Back. <laughs> there, there we go. Uh, so, you know, I wanted to be like Ken McIntyre. And so we had these learning conversations. And sometimes those learning conversations got kind of loud. Uh, and it was interesting, because sometimes they still get loud. I go to visit him from time to time, and I take him off the hands of his wife, because I know he's driving her crazy since he retired. And we have these conversations, still talking about the same things, principles, being fair, being right. When servant leadership came to MSOE, we were so excited, because this fed into more learning conversations for us, and connecting the dots, and feeling uh, the need to make sure that our students understood the value of servant leadership and being prosperous and good individuals. So I added it to my curriculum. I would often have, if, if David, Dr. David Howell is in here, I would often call him to the class and say, we're going to have our distinguished chair of servant leadership present to you the principles of servant leadership and how it relates to what you're doing right now and how it relates to the rest of your career and the rest of your life. So I thought that, you know, understanding this, I even had the, uh, someone come to our um, advisory board committee. So I have an advisory board of employers that we meet with on a quarterly basis. And so I had someone come there to talk about servant leadership. And it was fantastic because they ate it up. And I really believe this is one of the reasons that it kind of started to spread amongst the universities. So I thought, again, had, I had it together, understood this concept. Little did I know that I was going to get deeper involved in the concept and philosophy behind servant leadership. Not only deeper involved, but also practice. So about 14, 15 years ago, I was a woman that was transitioning through the grieving phase and getting over the death of my spouse. And I was finally starting to live again. I was seeing the light. If any of you have gone through a death, you know how things can see dark around you. I was starting to see the light again. I got my house in order, both emotionally and, and physically. My house was pristine. When I came home from work, everything was in its order. I paid out some debt, so I was freed. I started to travel and socialize. Then I got a call. I got a call that would change my life forever. The call was from Colorado. It started a series of traveling back and forth to Denver, Colorado regarding three of my grandchildren. I was faced with the decision of taking three grandchildren in, becoming a parent again, or allowing them to be this first I'll use that term because that's really how it was in the system. These children had been placed in multiple and often separate foster homes. They had been neglected both physically and emotionally. Two of those children were heavily medicated and diagnosed with post-traumatic stress syndrome and special needs. Now, I have my own philosophy on that. I think that they were special needs because they were heavily medicated. And I won't get into that story. That's another one. <laughs> but um, so here I was having to make this decision with the courts. I was in a panic. I mean, so imagine having all your kids going out the house, going through, getting your life together, growing my career, and all of a sudden, my yard were porcelain, and all those nice things that I had sitting around the house was going to be faced with three children, three small children. That has some challenges. So guess what? There went my pristine house. I'm back in debt again. <laughs> you know, my social life is uh, very different. I'm going to say that. <laughs> but they're there with me. And as although some people may see it as a challenge, it is a challenge. It still is. I have a 17-year-old still at home. By the way, two of those children 
Uh, one is graduating this year uh, from Mayat. One of the ones that they had diagnosed with special needs, got him off the medication. He graduated from high school with honors. Nice. And, and the other one that's here, he's spending a year in, in Germany right now and going to earn two degrees from MSOE. The other one is a 17-year-old girl at home. Now, the jury's still out on her. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, so here I was, I was faced with raising these children, and I had to rethink some things. And I'm going to share some <clears throat> things with you, some bullet points. Can you go to the slide? Two? Okay. So anyway, quickly I'll share some things with you. And these are, you're going to be able to recognize them based on the 10 principles of uh, servant leadership that was introduced to you. I learned about fairness, not equality. Although you may have shared this with your kids, they say, you, you're not fair, you gave so-and-so this and you didn't give that to me. Yes, you do treat them differently because their needs are differently. Lead by example. I went back to school to earn my doctors. I figured they need to see me doing something so they could continue to do something. Managing my resources for the greater good, that's how I got in debt again. Uh, <laughs> showing empathy and compassion, listening and promoting healing, because I had to listen to a lot of tough stories from these kids in order for them to heal. Reflecting on a whole different level, uh, I reflect on a daily basis. Encouraging and cheerleading, letting them know that I know they could do it, and they did. Building that trust and a sense of family and community was very important. Next slide, please. One, one discovery I have made is that um, servant leadership are lived values, so they cross your professional life and your personal life. So the very same thing that I was doing for my children, I identified in my professional life. And I'll share just a couple of those with you. Letting go to let grow. Valuing others' contribution fostering leadership skills, uh, encouraging commitment to their development, and then getting the hell out the way. <laughs> Building trust in a fun environment for people. Fair but not equal treatment. Understanding that what resources I needed for my assistant director are not necessarily the same resources that I needed for the administrative assistant. Uh, understanding that sometimes you have to listen to the stories that are not necessarily related to the job. Having that open door policy because you can't separate home and the things that are happening at home from what's going to happen at the job because that impacts productivity. Finally, I'll just say to you, I'm not going to share all of them, but I'll just say to you, I'm still a work in pro uh, process. Um, I do reflecting on a daily basis. I reflect sometimes during the day and always before I go to bed. And one of the things I want to share with you that I actually picked up in church yesterday. One should give the best of themselves while looking beyond themselves. Thank you.